another session of Bank Shots where my guest Amobi Okugo and I go through the modern news and moves of the modern day athlete. Uh, today, we got a couple good topics. We're going to go through how athletes continue to go beyond their field or court with content. We're going to talk about a for, or former retired professional athlete needing a plan and a coach. And then we're going to land on one subject, one topic that is the day and nation of the modern day athlete in what they are utilizing their voice for in an audience in a group very close to Amobi's home, Major League Soccer players. Uh, but Amobi, welcome in, brother. How's the week going? Man, you know what it is, man. Another, another grind, another week. Uh, happy to be doing this again. Every week we do it. Bang shots. Bank shots. Let it go. Let it fly. Let's get on here. Let's make some discussion, man. And I, I am forever impressed with juggling a frugal athlete, juggling a professional career, and then just juggling all that a Moby says. So I, <laughs> I'm grateful to be to be next to you. I want to start with a question, and it's a poll that I put put out this morning, and I just want to hear your feedback and, and thoughts on it. I've been told as an entrepreneur there are three qualities and three resources but you can only have two at a time. You can never have all three. More time, more money, or better quality. Meaning, if you want better quality, you're going to have to sacrifice either the time or the money. As you begin and you juggle your careers, which of those is most most prioritized for you? What is the most valuable resource of those three? That is a great question. Uh, it immediately reminds me of the fisherman in Mexico story where the businessman is on vacation and he- uh, Don't know it. Bring that oh, up. You oh, you definitely know this. So uh, this businessman is on vacation with his family and he meets a fisherman in uh, Mexico. This story has been told like a bunch of different times, a bunch yeah. of different versions, but this is, the, this is the version I know. So essentially he meets this fisherman. He's like, you know, what are you doing? Like, you, you know, and the fisherman's like, I chill with my family, I fish. And then, you know, go home and relax and play my guitar. And then the businessman's like, yo, you're doing like, you have an amazing potential business. Like you can fish, sell it to the market from there. You build it up, blah, blah, blah. And then ultimately, I'm going to cut a, a long story short. Um, the businessman like continues to like prime and prime. And then he's like, eventually you build it up enough where you can fish and then play with guitar and hang out with your family. So it's like, he's already doing that. So yeah what is really the purpose of what we do every day. So for me, wow. I would say, um, <laughs> I would say uh, quality, like quality of life, you know, health is wealth. And then um, time, because I feel like if you have time, you already have money or enough money to make sure that your quality and time are uh, good. I love it, man. And I know I need to go look at the full full fisherman story because that, that's a good one. I love I love analogies and I yeah. love tales. So uh, that's why the you know books like the Bible are uh, amazing because they they are great stories to share. Um, so as we transition into our first topic today, we look at new platforms, new mediums of where you and I are trying to push our brands out. The current athlete, as you are is always a little more desirable than the retired athlete myself. Um, <laughs> and as you see, NBA, NFL players starting to circulate around Athletes TV. Can you give us a little background on what Athletes TV is and why this really is showing us what their their intention is? Yeah, so there's a lot of different platforms, you know, whether it's Athletes TV, Players TV, um, there's a bunch of different content coming out. Um, it's 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 really cool to see. I think Players TV gives athletes a little bit more leverage and control of the content that they want to make, that they want to be a part of, and then it gives them the, the ability to make immediate returns on it. Whether it's licensing, uh, whether it's you know getting bought outright, you know selling scripts, selling ideas. Um, so it's as you can as you already know, eyeballs, eyeballs, eyeballs is what people are after. And who better to get eyeballs than athletes? And and that is, and you're right, Players TV is being utilized by the current athlete and saying, we as a brand are starting to see, we've been giving this away for too long. We've, we've mm -hmm. been selling our intellectual property. 
Uh, and it always reminds me of like the famous stories of, of young artists and musicians. Coming up, you, you, you feel this like quick in, in surplus of money, like, hey, will you sell me the rights to this song? I'll give you $100,000 for it. And 18 and starving artists, $100,000 is more money than you can ever imagine. Yeah. And yeah. It, it feels like Players TV is, is the unity of athletes today. It's saying, wait a minute, we've been selling rights to our music. Why are we not branding this, owning our intellectual property? And really the evolution of the athlete today and noticing that is how you become wealthy. I come from the wealth management side and I started to look at like who were our clients. Our clients were not doctors, lawyers making five hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 because their lifestyle always creeped up and they were never accumulating the wealth you would imagine. Our clients in the wealth perspective were the gravel company owner, were oh. the owner of uh, you know multiple RV lots, crazy things like that. Or as you look at like an Amazon model, owning the actual stock of the company, having equity and ownership. I think this is, as you mentioned, re receiving the eyeballs. And again, athletes are role models, whether we like it or not. So you're already going to be intrigued but do you see this being a, a medium and a stage to share more of, you know, what interests you off the field? If you were, if this would have come out 10 years ago, this is where you would have begun a frugal athlete. Exactly. And I think, I mean, we've seen it outside of sports today, like Tyler Perry just recently became a billionaire. There was an Instagram page or Instagram media company that owned a couple of accounts that just sold for like 80 million. So you see athletes starting to share their interests outside of sport, you know, whether it's Kyrie Irving, who's involved with Players TV, DeAndre Jordan, who's had like cooking channels and stuff before in the past, Travis Kelsey, I'm sure he's gonna, you know, highlight some of the stuff that he's doing with his new STEM um, um, community center that he's um, investing in or building up in Kansas City. So it's you're giving your audience, your fans, a way to engage um, off the field, and that's what fans want to do like obviously they want to support you and cheer for you on the field but they also want to gravitate towards you and your passions and see the synergy and similarities that they have um off the field and like can you imagine if obviously athletes have to do their obligations and do media requests but what if someone was like you know i'm only doing media through my own platform mm. and i feel oh. like it's going to get to that point where it's I'm going to do the standard interview request, but outside of that, anything that you see from me is only on my channels, on my website, and it's a subscription model, or you have to pay to see it. Like, imagine LeBron James doing that. Obviously, he does a big part of it with Uninterrupted, but imagine if it was even larger. And as you look at this, does the NIL's conversation start to bleed into this as college athletes? Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. For, you know, especially you know, college, you already have a fan base, indirect, you know, your alumni, your, 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 your classmates, your, your supporters within the community. So for the media aspect and um, shout out to some of the organizations and colleges that are trying to, you know, be proactive about it. Um, the student athletes are really in a unique time, a really valuable time for them to leverage um, their content long and after their first long after and where you see college high school athletes as we've talked about on this show come with ten thousands hundreds of thousands of eyeballs that content is going to continue and you're starting to look at well what makes me unique beyond just my game and it's already evolving into well that is what is going to be valuable going forward that is what is going to be uh creating my brand and the last thing i wanted to talk about on this was another article around the NBA, Think 450, which is one of the NBA uh, uh, kind of social entrepreneurial ideas, and Bal I'm going to not say this name, <laughs> Bal Balaji, they are creating this, this app and this content around training. And so just like you were saying, if I as an athlete have a 40,000 followers and start to say, hey, come do this contest or come do this game, we're going to go shoot, we're going to go kick, we're going to go run. We're going to train together. I am introducing and engaging. 
in a day and an age where we might not have as much live engagement and interaction. And so I am going to thirst for more connectivity off the field. Do you see, you know, it could a Mobi at uh, 12, 13 be able to train with a Mobi at 30? That is an entire platform in itself. That's a, yeah, that's that, that's a game changer. Like you can see the exact model that your favorite athlete trained and what they did to make them, you know, make it to that elite level. It's just a way to, like we said earlier, get eyeballs, get engagement, get a, a committed fan base or following to really gravitate towards, towards some of the stuff that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So as we go on, this is, a, you know, one of those positive financial stories around seeing a professional athlete, one that was in the spotlight and his recognition of not only what a value financial plan is, but him calling out his advisor, not by name, they were very particular <laughs> in the article, not by name, but by service. Uh, so give me give me the highlight on what Dwayne Wade was doing and what you took away from this. Yeah, it was really, it was a really intriguing article. So Dwayne Wade uh, mentioned that, you know, it was his financial coach that um, really got him to think differently around money and helped him, you know, manage his money as he retired. Um, some of the mistakes that he made was, uh, gambling and having 16 cars. Uh, famous, 16. <laughs> famous, wow. famous football coach Herm Edwards said when he talked about you know athletes and cars, it's like you can only drive one car at one time. So why have 16? I can understand two, maybe like a utility car and like a nice car, but you can only drive one car at one time. Um, so until you figure out a way to drive multiple cars, you don't need multiple cars, and a car is only meant to get you from A to B. So as rich as D Wade is, it still doesn't make sense for him to have 16 cars. Um, and then gambling, that's a lot of, that's a big mm -hmm. issue amongst athletes. And I don't think it's really a gambling problem more than a competition problem. We are natural yes. competitors. And when you put us in that environment, um, you know, we don't think, we think we have to win. And uh, there's a funny story about Charles Barkley and how he kind of combated his gambling problem was when he met with the casino like owner and the casino owner was kind of like boasting. He's like, oh, I love athletes. They never know when to stop. Like they always want to win. And yeah. as you know, Vegas always wins or casino always wins. So once you get that mindset down that, all right, not everything's a competition. Maybe you can, you know, handle your gambling a little bit better. Uh, and it is interesting to see the the warm engagement and the welcoming these high profile athletes have as they walk into the casino. I remember the first time I walked in <laughs> Drew Brees, the owner of the casino came down, came down. And, and moved us and brought us things. <laughs> and you're just like, this is, there's a reason here. Yeah, and I, reason like, here. They're not doing it for me. Um, but you do, you start to measure that gambling issue. Michael Jordan, famous out on the golf yeah. course for continually competing. And it is this idea of, we are always risk seekers. We are thrill seekers as athletes. And what I fear is we transition this into now sports are gone. You go to the casino. And what has been really interesting over these last six months as sports have been taken away from the society, people have moved that gambling itch into day trading, into Robin Hood, into yeah. the, the stock market and saying, Hey, Amobi, did you hear about big commerce? I'm getting it on big commerce because it's going to go up. Hey, did you did you double down on it? I just made money, Amobi. You missed it. Yeah. That 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 everything's story, a game. That, yeah, it's a game. And my question to them is always, what company are you investing in? Can you tell me <laughs> why? G give, give me give me one report that you've read that you understand what the heck it is that they do or why they're going to go up. And nobody ever has those answers. They saw it on Instagram. They saw yeah. it on you know this this. They saw, a screenshot. <laughs> they saw a screenshot and it scares me to see athletes start to adopt this model. Athletes are starting to say, I want to be a business. And I know business men and women invest. And so I want to start investing. So I'm going to day trade and flip. And I just push on the brakes and say, wait a minute. Number one, as a professional athlete, you don't need any more ordinary income. And if you are a day trader, it is ordinary income, difference yeah. between short-term and long-term capital gains. But this other idea of how Dwayne Wade really started to sit back and say, 
the gambling, the cars, 16 cars. I, I remember it said uh, um, a Maybach. Maybach. Yeah, Maybach. Maybach. Yeah. Maybach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Okay. We definitely got we're, 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 making that into, we're making that into a clip right there. Yeah, that, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, but see, it cost him $6,000 a month. And like they like you were saying, if you're not driving a car and it costs you six grand a month or seventy two thousand dollars a year to just sit there, I don't care how cool it is. But he took a step back and he said, "My cars, my gambling, my plan—that is what is most important." And he started to really be conscious and compartmentalize all of these things I was doing was going to lead into no different than a, a plan for a season to go chase a championship. I needed to define my championship. I needed to see what life I wanted to live for the rest of my life. And this is one of those concepts. I actually delivered a session this morning to a company around why are we even starting in the 401k? They had about 15 to 20 new employees, a couple of which were pushing back and saying, I don't want to participate in this. It's all around how you see your life. And a plan is only as good as its destination. So we have to begin with our why and our purpose. But these strategies, this idea that he sat down with an advisor and that advisor really allowed him to start to see, I think the most important thing here is maintaining your lifestyle, not the next car, not the next gambling, you know, vacation or trip or cool this, that. You want X, let's figure out a way to deliver X. And he finally walked away from that table and said, that's value to me. No, that's great. That's a great point. It, so for so for athletes, like what advice would you have for them when building a plan or like avoiding gambling? You know, one trick that I use, because, you know, we like to have fun. I only bring cash, like the amount of cash that I want to lose. Um, that's I want the, to lose. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to lose, but... I'm not going, I don't bring my card, so I have to go to the ATM. I don't want to chase. Like, this is the amount of money that I am comfortable losing. And then if I win, yes. If I don't, okay, I go home. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because that the measurement changes because it's all risk reward. Like you just said, I'm comfortable losing $500. I also tell athletes, what is the number that you want to win? Because if you win a thousand dollars, does that move the needle? Did that excite you? Yes, no. Is that a hundred thousand dollars? What is the number? Because unless you have that number as well, you're never going to leave the table. You're like that, gonna, that is always going to change. <laughs> you're always sitting there, and as you said, Vegas always wins unless there's a global pandemic. Because right now, I think Vegas has got to be. I know New Orleans is hurting, so I got to imagine they're hurting as well. So my my advice to athletes is to begin with the end in mind. What do I both positively and negatively comfortable walking out of this building in this house with? But what I really thought was interesting in this article, in this idea of the modern day athlete is his appreciation for his advisor, his off the field, his money coach. And again, I, I, I thought it was really cool and kind of a marketing ploy that they didn't mention him by name. But the idea that he pointed to his advisor and said, it wasn't until he sat me down and made me understand the big picture, made me see things differently. And that's exactly what you and I are trying to do. And this brings up a, another issue because college sports are going through kind of a transition. And as you see financial advisor as your money coach and kind of what we are modeling and trying to become, you look at the value of that in a plan. If a, an advisor can deliver to you the, the outcomes of your plan, are they not worth it? The first question everybody always asks me is, well, is an advisor worth me paying? And if they're the ones that tell you to get up and leave the table because you lost a little or get up to leave the table because you made a little or to go from 16 cars down to one or two, they are absolutely worth every penny. But as you look at college coaches, how their salaries and contracts have continued to escalate, do you see that same correlation in value? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I think what's uh, important about D. Wade and his coach is that 
you know, we didn't hear him talk about what investments he needs to be in or things. He changed his behavior around finance. And I feel like that's where you come in. That's where I come in. Changing your behavior around money management, finance, career. So when, when it comes to the college athletes, I think one of the biggest things that they're going to have to focus on, how can a coach, how can an organization, how can a team change my behavior around thinking that I'm more than an athlete or I'm an athlete CEO? How can they help me perform on the field? How they can help me perform in my schoolwork? How can they help me perform in NIL? How can they help me take advantage of that? Because uh, while I'm either going to be there a year, two years, three years, four years, uh, year plus one, I want to be able to maximize my time there. And the coach that I'm going to go with and give my verbal recruitment letter or verbal commitment and offer to has to make sure that they're going to help me and help me ultimately get to where I want to go, whether that's pro, whether that's, you know, successfully transition after school, whatever it looks like. And speaking of being a pro, thinking, speaking of being more than an athlete, we transition to our last topic around the risks and rewards that are going on in these protests. We saw the major headlight of the, the Milwaukee Bucks boycotting, and it was kind of this domino effect of the sports nation. But what we want to talk about on the financial lens is how different of a risk it is for different sports and different players to make these kinds of statements. You, you, you know these, this audience extremely well. Major League Soccer had, a, had an article and really a crisis on their hands around this, this situation. No, yeah, and it's, it's important before we start to just say that, you know, shout out to all the players that, you know, um, stood together, um, showed unity, and spoke out for the social injustice that they believe in. I think that's um, that goes unsaid. But um, like with anything, whether it's, you know, speaking out, uh, negotiating contract, protesting, there's going to be risk and reward. And the article that you're alluding to is the MLS article saying that um, because of the financial constraints or compensation compared to other leagues, specifically the uh, NBA, um, it makes uh, protesting a lot harder. And I feel like people don't see that from the outside. They see, oh, they only protested for one game or why are they even protesting or how come they protested or should they protest or they protested. Now what? Um, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Um, you know, there's been football players that have mentioned that they are in the last year of the contract. So they don't want to, like, ruffle any feathers. There's people, especially MLS players, that said they've lost endorsements. Um, this all goes into account when you decide to stand up um, for your for your for your rights or for what you believe in. And I think it, I think what we try to talk about is these are scenarios that athletes go through when deciding what to do, because we only see the action, but we don't see the things that go on behind it. So for us to kind of come here and talk about some of the risk and reward, I think it was important to uh, highlight that. And I couldn't agree with you more, brother. And, and as you mentioned, so much respect for the unification of the athlete world in speaking out on what they believe in. And to me, this is a historical moment for a lot of degrees. You go back to where athletes began in Roman times with gladiators, where they were admired, celebrated by the masses, but not respected. Nobody ever heard a gladiator's voice and let it promote change. And you go throughout history of you know the Olympics, with uh, John Carlos and Tommy Smith raising their fists on the pedestal. You go to Cassius Clay becoming Muhammad Ali. You go to Billie Jean King. You see these athletes who have stepped out of their comfort zone and risked everything. Olympians go to lose an endorsement and live on nothing. Cassius Clay becoming Muhammad Ali. They stripped his license away to even be a boxer. And Billie Jean King has you know, went through decades of ridicule and, and, and judgment. And so you look at the athletes today and why I I come at it from more the major leagues, the, the soccer player mindset is because most of them are the bubble player. Most of them are the replaceable. Mm -hmm. You don't have the leverage. And so for you to truly stand up and say, I believe in this, that is putting yourself so far in the back to what is right, trying to be on the right side of history. And it is such a, a massive major point because, and I don't, I don't know if you know this, but three of the top paid athletes and celebrities in the world 
are Stop. Messi, Ronaldinho, and Neymar. Yeah. And you look at that and you say, take those people out of it. The rest of them are fighting and scratching for a living and a lifestyle. They're willing to sacrifice their opportunity and their dream because they see what is happening. It is truly that gladiator mindset being pushed and washed away. And athletes are no longer just celebrated role models, but they are admired and respected for what they are saying, not just what they are doing. I think it is an extremely, extremely neat time. And it is going to continue to challenge and push the model as we deal with the virus and as we are not in the traditional athletic lens, uh, how this is going to move forward. As you mentioned, one of the storylines that I, I is, is tough to swallow is they just did it for one game. It's not going to amount to anything. That is overlooking the point. Mm -hmm. And that is what we all really need to admire and respect and applaud is the sport world made a point. And that's a really neat atmosphere. No, you, yeah, I couldn't have said a better muscle. That's exactly right. Absolutely. So our financial takeaways today are Dwayne Wade's message. And it was the secret of wealth is to have a plan. The secret is to have a plan. That's if you have 50 million. That's if you have $50. The secret is to have a plan. Do you have any uh, athletes you want to spotlight this week? Uh, any athletes that we want to spotlight? Uh, who made some good news recently? I guess uh, Dwayne Wade, because, um, you know, many times you hear about the athletes like him of that status. You know, you don't want to hear about him um, being in that situation. But for him to be open and honest, I think um, a lot of times in the locker room, everyone wants to put up a front. Um, so him being open and honest about some of the financial mistakes that he made um, will help guys not as fortunate from a compensation standpoint, really buckle down and, uh, you know, take better use of their money management and ultimately have a plan. Because if you uh, fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. Mm, that is an excellent way yeah. to end, brother. Another week, great topics, great conversation. Always appreciate uh, getting on and jumping on with you. Enjoy the rest of the week and uh, look forward to discussing the news and moves of the Modern Day Athlete next Wednesday, sir. Most definitely. We definitely gonna have to do like a breakdown of all the gambling tricks that they do to try to get you your money. You know, keeping, oh, yeah. keeping the uh, keeping the casino dark, you know, the drinks that they try to give you. Oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> exactly. Here's an interesting fact. There are no clocks in casinos. Yeah. No clock. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely gotta break that down sometime. Uh, but wow. yeah, every Wednesday. Thanks for you know deciding to co-host this and that's it thanks guys let's keep growing brother Love that. damn <laughs> out <laughs>